This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. Oklahoma Sports Network, this is Tracy Musset, Jordan Ray, back at Piedmont High School, Class 5A boys, area consolation games. It's the Carl Albert Titans taking on the El Reno Indians. These teams have already met twice this year. This will be the third time, first time in the playoffs. The previous two meetings came in district play. Carl Albert came out on top in those first two meetings. Will they come out the third time? with a win. They say it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. Carl Albert's going to try to prove that uh, oh, adage wrong here today. Again, this is, an, this is a, an elimination game. It's the last game before the state tournament. The winner plays in the state tournament next week. The loser has their season end here today. As far as Middell schools go, it's been a good run so far. Midwest City boys and girls both winning area championships, punching their tickets to the state tournament. And it is the, uh, earlier today it was the Dell City girls and the Carl Albert girls both getting wins headed to the state tournament. The only two teams left, varsity basketball teams left in the Middell school system are the Carl Albert boys and the Dell City boys. We've got the Carl Albert boys about to tip off here in a few minutes against El Reno, and then the Dell City boys will tip off tonight as they will take on Guthrie, uh, each one with a chance to make it. We could have all six Middell uh, school district teams in the state tournament next week. For Carl Albert, I mentioned they'd already played El Reno twice this year. They played the first time uh, back on the very first game of the season for Carl Albert, the first day of December. Here we are on the second day of March. So it's been three months and a day since the first time they met this year. 66-49 was the score in that first win. Carl Albert winning by 17. They followed that up with a win just uh, a, a little over a month ago on the 23rd of January with an 18-point win, 75-57. And here they are meeting the third time. The run for Carl Albert to get to this game includes wins over Noble and Elgin and then a loss to Crossings Christian for for El Reno, it was a win over Santa Fe South, a loss to Midwest City, a win over Lawton MacArthur, and then another win over Santa Fe South to get to this point. So we're getting ready. Probably we expect to have a national anthem played, but no one's lining up like that's going to be the case. We'll have to wait and see. While we're waiting, we'll basically set things up again to repeat what you said. So for, so for Middale so far, four advance. Two with a chance. It's the first of two. You're a poet. And I know it. Yeah. <laughs> I, had that, I had that in my head for a while. I had to use it. <laughs> it does look like we're going to have starting lineups announced. So our starting lineup sponsored by Dynamic Health Clinic. Dr. Kaufman specializes in athletic injuries and is able to get athletes back in action very quickly using a system called Advanced Muscle Integration. Play better, recover faster at Dynamic Health Clinic. And again, Dynamic Health Clinic sponsoring our opening lineups. We are about to have National Anthem played here in the gymnasium, so we're going to take a quick break during National Anthem on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Where sports is our middle name. We are the Oklahoma Sports Network. If you've lived in Oklahoma long enough, you'll know that we get extreme weather. With that extreme weather comes hail damage to your roof and an insurance claim. When that happens, there's not a better company to deal with on your insurance claim than Cantrell Roofing and Construction. Since 1987, Cantrell Roofing and Construction has proven to be the best in the business. And always remember, got hail? Call Cantrell. Call them at 405 642 
8558. Sports Network, Tracy Mussett, Jordan Ray. We had the final notes of the national anthem there as we came back live here in the gymnasium. This is Class 5A area re, uh, consolation game between the Carl Albert Titans and the El Reno Indians. Looks like Carl Albert will be the visiting team on the scoreboard today. Starting lineup being introduced for the Carl Albert Titans. They include sophomore number one, Jaden Hopkins. Senior, number 12, Hutch Russell. Senior, number 21, Ryan Reynolds. Senior, number 22, Quincy Hopkins. And senior, number 23, Marcus James. Four seniors starting for this Carl Albert team. And the starting lineup being introduced now for the home team on the scoreboard, the El Reno Indians. Number four, Josiah, senior Josiah Reeves. Number five, a junior Carter Roman Nose. Number 10, a freshman Caleb Blackwolf. Number 23, a senior Phoenix White Shirt. And number 24, a junior, Alex Elizondo. By the way, it's um, Ravellis, the first name. Which one? The number four, I believe, or whoever was announced first for El Reno. His brother, James, was a really good post player. And uh, El Reno and Carl Albert have had a good basketball rivalry over the years. The last couple of years especially, El Reno has won the regular season matchups uh, the past two years. And this year, Carl Albert has the season sweep. But it's a famous sports saying, and it's held true in other instances in high school this year, winning against a team three times, a good team three times anyway, is not easy. Right. And now, now are, one of these, are one of these names wrong? Is that what you're saying? No. Um, this one right here, number four, it's Josiah Ravellis. Oh, Ravellis. There's, a, there's okay. a V there that sneaks up on you. Oh, got it, got it, got it. I wrote it down wrong. Now, Thank you. <clears throat> and Carter Romanos has been in the midst of this rivalry. He was, he's was he been a star player for El Reno since he's a freshman. So guarding him effectively, containing him, very important for Carl Albert. All, the next thing that's real important, Marcus James cannot be in foul trouble. And he Mark, didn't try Mark, to tip it to Quincy and uh, didn't work there. Yeah, Marcus James jumping against Phoenix White shirt. James jumps up, he gets his hand on the wall strong, just can't get it over to his teammate. Oh, how they save that. Good save by Black Wolf. Roman Nose driving in, goes to the hole. Wow, nice move by Roman Nose. He gets on the board first for El Reno. Yeah, he wants to go right. He's got good long strides. He's, he's lanky, but he knows how to use his length very well. Russell running point for Carl Albert. Jaden Hopkins now has gotten off to the last last couple of games, a little bit of a slow start with a couple of mistakes, but then really settled in and played well. Got to travel in the paint on Quincy Hopkins, turning the ball over. Yeah, you know, that, that really wasn't there, that drive trying to split two defenders. And Hopkins is the one guarding Romanos. Great matchup, but he needs to make Romanos go to his left as much as he can. Elizondo brings the ball down the court. Pass intended for Ravellis, and it goes out of bounds off his hands. Ravellis, much smaller than, I'm assuming James Ravellis is his brother. Much smaller than James Ravellis, but very good player nonetheless. Now Carl Albert sets up their offense. Two to zero is the score. Jaden Hopkins on the left wing. Marcus James to the low post. Switch sides of the court. Inside high post now to Reynolds. He backs up. Hopkins goes off screen. Reynolds for three. Top of the key. It's a little long. Marcus James pulls down the rebound. Ball stripped away. 
Jaden Hopkins comes out with it. Second opportunity here for Carl Albert. Travel call of Quincy Hopkins. Two of them, you know, it's a good offensive rebound for Marcus James, but you got to be aware of the defenders around you. If you put the ball on the floor, chances are one of them is going to knock it away. Elizondo brings the ball to court again. Jaden Hopkins staying right with him. And now Roman knows, defended by Quincy Hopkins. Little weave going across the top of the key. Three, front of the rim, no good. Marcus James gets the rebound. Jaden Hopkins gets into the paint. Foul called on the floor. That foul going on number four, Josiah Ravellis. Turned out to be a good foul because Runnels made that three. Two to zero, the score still. 5.55 to play in this Sherpa moving first period. Jump ball called. And possession arrow will stay with Carl Albert. Hopkins with an easy layup he missed. And two travels. So a little bit of a rough start. Quincy and then a Hopkins turnover on Quincy Hopkins. Throws the ball away on the inbound pass. Three turnovers for Carl Albert, all coming from Quincy Hopkins so far. Now El Reno working the ball around the perimeter. Roman Nose defended by Jaden Hopkins. Jaden doing a good job of staying with Roman Nose thus far. Roman Nose, very smart basketball player, very athletic as well. Again, good job by Hopkins staying with him, keeping him from driving in. Now Blackwell puts up a shot from the free throw line. Marcus James pulls down another rebound. That's three boards already for Marcus James. Now Quincy Hopkins drives in, uses the screen, pulls up from the left elbow, and he drains a two. That's his shot, and it's a good screen from Reynolds. And Quincy Hopkins can go on a tear from that corner shot if he, want, if he wants to. Nice steal by Hutch. He drew a foul, I think. We just talked to his mom. A foul. Well, pleasant conversation, wasn't it? Yeah, good conversation. Yeah, yeah she said she, she said wanted me to talk Hutch about Russell, her. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, she's a counselor at Middle City High School where she graduated. But okay. uh, her sons went to Carl Albert, as I believe her, um, her father did. Quincy Hopkins finds Marcus James cutting to the basket. James misses the layup. The foul earlier was called on Carter Romano's. And that was the second team foul on El Reno. Boy, they have two bunnies missed by Carl Albert. Those will start to add up. And that was the part of the issue against crossings, of course. They couldn't score much, but that's part, the crossings had the size to really frustrate you here. That, that's not the case as much against El Reno, though they have a lot of good athletes. Romano's for three off the glass, and a foul will be called on Phoenix White Shirt. His first personal third team foul. Going over the back on Runnels. Third team foul. So something to watch out for. The Reno's rack up the fouls a bit. The only foul on Carl Albert on Jaden Hopkins so far. Jaden Hopkins makes a nice move. He gets the continuation. It. Bucket and a foul. Here's the super subs. Instant replay. Folks, super subs has chicken fillies. Try the deluxe, the buffalo, or the barbecued chicken super subs on South Douglas in Midwest City. Jaden Hopkins shooting the Tooney Buys Houses free throw. In and out, white shirt with a rebound and a foul on Marcus James as he just got underneath white shirt while he was in the air. One of the big storylines in Carl Albert's loss yesterday, Marcus James repeatedly got in foul trouble. I, I, you, you wanted to be aggressive on the offensive glass, but he has to be really smart about it. One foul right now, not a big deal, but you don't want to get another one crashing the offensive rebounds. Not Quincy, right now, anyway. Quincy Hopkins on Elizondo, and a quick foul called on Hopkins. That'll be his first personal. Fouls are adding up. But Arena with four. We'll see if Carl Albert can take advantage of that. They're not... I must have missed one on El Reno somewhere there. Oh, I did the one that was on Jaden Hopkins. Well, Hutch Black Russell Wolf. read the play, but couldn't draw the charge. Black Wolf drives in, scores the layup. Three fouls on Carl Albert, four on El Reno. Four to four is the score.
Hutch Russell for three. Back iron. Rebound, Quincy Hopkins. Three from top of the key, no good. Rebound pulled down by Rivellis. Long pass down the court. Elizondo pulls up for the three. Shot no good. Long rebound. Russell pulls it down. Love it. Yeah, Hutch should not have tried to dribble that. Just pick up the ball. You're, there's too many arena players around you. Now, yeah, ball was tipped away from behind. Three put up from the right wing, and Jaden Hopkins pulls down a rebound. A miss was by Rivellis. And now Jaden Hopkins gives it to Quincy. Quincy pulls up the right elbow, passes the ball off. Reynolds misses the shot. Marcus James gets the rebound, and he's fouled going to the hole. Marcus James is active. That's the good news for Carl Albert. They're missing a lot of bunnies. Ryan Reynolds, you think, well, he's just about 10 feet from the basket. He's a good shooter. But he's not used to shooting at that, that type of shot from that type of angle. It's where you almost rather him try to either use the backboard or attack to the left side because he's a lefty. As James makes the first free throw, so Carl Albert retaking the lead. Foul was called on Phoenix White Shard, his second personal fifth team foul on El Reno. Marcus James hits the Tooney Buys Houses free throw. Folks, Tooney Buys Houses in any condition. If you or someone you know needs to sell a home for any reason, please call today for a cash offer, 405-931-3046. Marcus James hits both free throws, and Carl Albert is on top by two once again. The matchup remains Jaden Hopkins defending against Romanos. Elizondo drives in, kicks the ball out to the corner. Shot no good. Blackwall cleans it up inside. And yeah, Marcus James just lost him. Tied up, 6-6, six to six, 2.25 to go here in the first period. Brought to you by Sherpa Moving. Who hit that bucket? I think that was Jaden Hopkins. Jaden Hopkins with four points here in the first period. The lead back to Carl Albert. And just like that, Romanos drives in and scores. Arena will take a timeout. Looks like we do have a timeout. 8-8 eight to eight is the score. And it's a full timeout, so we'll take a timeout as well here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Where sports is our middle name. We are the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Oklahoma Sports Network, this is Tracy Musset, Jordan Ray, back at Piedmont High School, Class 5A boys, area consolation game. The Carl Albert Titans tied up 8-8 eight to eight with the El Reno Indians. Carl Albert ball coming out of the timeout. We are in the Sherpa moving first period. There's an under two minutes to play in this first. Jaden Hopkins drives in, lays it off the glass for two. He has six points in the first period. He does not need much room does Jaden Hopkins to get the driving lane going. Does El Reno look like they had the paint congested, but Hopkins got an easy layup. In the game now is William Elledge. Black Wolf drives the baseline and puts it up. He has six points. 10 to 10 is the score. We've been tied five times in this first period. Only one lead change. It was El Reno scoring first, then Carl Albert took the lead. Quincy Hopkins for three, front of the rim, shot no good. Ball pulled down. Steven Anderson in the ball game now for Carl Albert. He's going in and a foul called. And it is a shooting foul is the indication. Foul goes on Bradley Island. Did he say two? Yes, yeah, two Bradley shots. Island in oh, the game. Number two, yeah. Well, it's good for Carl Albert. They're scoring right now because their defense is not good. They are giving up too many open layups. Not defending well players without the ball. 
Steven Anderson hits the first of the two nearby houses free throws. Folks, this first period brought to you by Sherpa Moving. Sherpa Moving is a local full-service moving company. They offer packing, unpacking, and special handling services. Their team is experienced and knowledgeable and help you get through what is usually a difficult time. Sherpa Moving, for all your moving needs, call them at 405-724-8750. I used them last week. I've moved a lot as a military veteran. I've moved many times, and it was the best moving experience I've ever had. Sherpa Moving. Turnover for El Reno gives the ball back to Carl Albert. A one-point lead and the possession with under a minute to play in the Sherpa moving first period. Quincy Hopkins on the right wing, driving on Island, gets up off the glass. Somehow he made that go in. Island defended him well. Hopkins kind of off balance, just was able to use the backboard effectively going to his right. Elizondo from the left elbow drains that one. A lot of points this quarter. Now the offenses are picking up. Carl Albert going with a smaller lineup now. Marcus James getting replaced by Brandon Rogers. Down to 20 seconds left in this first period. Jaden Hopkins is dribbling the ball, letting the clock tick away as Carl Albert's holding for the last shot of the period. They have a one-point lead, 13 to 12. Elizondo screen set by Reynolds. Hopkins dribbles behind his back and loses the ball. Roman Nose picks it up. Passes off, and a foul called with less than a second left on the clock. Bucket counts, right? Uh, I didn't see Did the motion for that. Did... I didn't see the ball go in, but I thought I saw him indicate the bucket counts. Maybe not. Okay. No, but still a disaster for Carl Albert. You, you want to hold to the last shot, and Jaden Hopkins has played well, but, you know, again, both Hopkins brothers have got in trouble trying to split defenders. I just don't think that's a good idea against Del Reno. Jaden Hopkins picked up a second foul here in this first period. And William Elledge hits the first of the two new buys houses free throws, tying it up for the sixth time in the first period. 13-13 the score. One more free throw coming for Elledge. El Reno can take the lead back with less than a second left in the period. Elledge taking a lot of time. Puts the shot up. It's no good. And after one, we're tied up 13 all. Carl Albert versus El Reno here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and ask yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light and you think all of a sudden their insurance company's gonna be all neighborly about it? <laughs> insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. Call Robin Will. Oklahoma Sports Network, Tracy Mussett, Jordan Ray back at Piedmont High School with the Carl Albert Titans and the El Reno Indians are knotted up 13 all as we enter the Buffalo Wild Wings second period of play. Buffalo Wild Wings, folks, at 5500 Tinker Diagonal in Dell City. If you go to Buffalo Wild Wings, support your favorite Middell sports team, download the team card on your phone, show your waiter, and your team will get 10% of the proceeds. Buffalo Wild Wings in Dell City. 13-13 the score, El Reno with the basketball. Ravellis with the ball, gets in a little trouble out there, and now it's a battle for it. Somehow or another, Elledge got that ball up off the floor and threw up over Carl Albert defenders. Black Wolf, again, he struggled a little bit, got the pass off. Brandon Rogers in the ball game for the Titans. Steven Anderson, Marcus James on the bench from that starting lineup. Three from the corner, no good. Quincy Hopkins pulls down the rebound for Carl Albert. He got way up in the air. Pushing hard, now he hands off, and Carl Albert reset their offense. Steven Anderson driving in, ball stripped away. Ravellis comes up with it. Black Wolf headed all the way to the hole and drags wow. his foot as he tries to stop. Now it's the defense that's doing a little better. 
Give Ravellis credit for that steal on, on Anderson. Anderson probably does not have the burst that Quint, uh, Jaden Hopkins does. Jaden Hopkins yeah. brings the ball up the court now. Elizondo waits for him on D. Rodgers with a screen. Now Quincy Hopkins on the right wing. Rodgers battling in there for position with Ravellis. Good patient ball movement here by Carl Albert. Quincy Marino, Hopkins. Very scrappy 2-3 zone. Reynolds for three from the corner. Gets his own rebound. Puts it off the glass. Good for two. Good job of a lefty knowing how to use his left hand and use the backboard even though you're coming from the baseline. Elizondo gets the ball down the court. Goes around. Anderson lays it off the glass for two. And Ryan Reynolds on defense has got to get there a little sooner. But that was a heck of a drive by Elizondo. Finishing with his left hand because even though he went right, that was the best way to finish that shot. 15-15 the score. 5.45 left to play in the Buffalo Wild Wings second period. Steven Anderson top of the key. Zone defense, by the way, by, by uh, El Reno. Reynolds skip pass taken away by Roman Nose. He can score and he can play defense. Now he misses a layup. Second chance attempt. Romano's punches the ball. It's a third chance or third opportunity for El Reno. And now Quincy Hopkins gets a rebound. Ball stripped away from Hopkins. Here comes Elizondo. Jaden Hopkins on D. Elizondo what? misses the layup. Good Great D. vertical jump by Hopkins. And Rodgers brings the ball down the court. Good defense by both teams here. And Quincy Hopkins is just too reckless at times. He's got too many turnovers for your liking if you want Carl Albert to win. Rodgers from the baseline oh. hits the jumper. I did not anticipate him trying to create. I know he's a player of a game for us in, in their victory against crossings, but that surprised me. Elizondo drives in a little out of control there. Rebound Quincy Hopkins. Uh, when Hopkins pulls up. Two-point lead for Carl Albert. Reynolds in the paint, low post, puts up a little four-foot shot from the left side, no good. And rebound goes out of bounds, El Reno basketball. And in that case, Reynolds got too deep to, to try to use the backboard. He was too deep close to the baseline there. And now he's coming out. Crawford's going real small. Hutch Russell in the game. We still aren't seeing LeBron Royal yet. And this may not be a matchup where Coach Price wants to use him. Black Wolf brings the ball down the court. Ends off to Romano's. Two-point lead. Elizondo goes the hole. Shot blocked by Anderson. Rodgers getting down the court. Romano's punches the ball out of his hands. It hits the score table. Ball will stay with Carl Albert. Hopkins takes the inbound pass. Crosses the timeline. Gives it to Quincy Hopkins. At the free throw line, ball punched out of his hands. Rodgers for three in the corner. No good. Roman knows with the rebound. Black Wolf headed to the hole, lays it up. Foul called. Shot no good. The foul's on Rodgers. That's the first foul of this Buffalo Wild Wings second period. Black Wolf is a confident young man. He's not afraid to attack the basket. Uh, and the Reno's team speed has gotten into Carl Albert's head some. See the missed free throw there, but Carl Albert has made some shaky passes. Tooney buys houses free throws here by Caleb Black Wolf. Misses the first. The second one is good. Two for four from the line for El Reno. It's a one-point ball game again. Carl Albert on top, 17-16. Rodgers on the right wing. Drives around Elizondo. Kicks the ball to Anderson in the corner for three. Short. Rebound Revelis taken away by Russell. Quincy Hopkins goes up for the shot and draws the foul. 
Hutch Russell's made some very uh, Johnny-on-the-spot defensive plays. Not sure the El Reno fans like the yeah. foul call there, but Hopkins caught that one up for a shot with three defenders on him. Surely there was contact from someone, right? Black Wolf yep. called for the foul, and Hopkins gets to Tooney Beishaus' free throws. But was there enough contact? The refs say yes. Hard to tell. And I feel like you mentioned the El Reno fans. I feel like they uh, they are loud here. They, they've been a little louder than the Carl Albert fans. Hopkins misses the first of the Tooney Beishaus' free throws. the score, three and a half minutes to play in the Buffalo Wild Wings second period. Hopkins misses both free throws. Roman Nose gets the rebound. Carl Albert quickly, even though that was a miss on the free throw, gets into a full court pressure. Island for three. Boom! It's a Bobby Lewis insurance three. And El Reno takes the lead back. Bobby Lewis insurance with surprisingly great rates. Two locations to serve you. One in Dell City, what a finish. one in Choctaw, and Jaden Hopkins does a great job getting to the hole, tying it back up, 19-19. Island inside to Roman Nose. Roman Nose goes up from about four feet out on the baseline. He hits the shot. Now the Carl El Ringo's doing a good job attacking the press. They're getting good shots because Carlberg's press is not effective enough, not disruptive. Anderson gave a good head fake. Roman Nose came around him, and then as Anderson went to dribble into the basket, Roman Nose reaches from behind and slaps the ball out of bounds. Anderson inbounds to Rogers. Quincy Hopkins sets up the offense. Now Anderson. Russell for three in the corner. Boom! It's a Bobby Lewis insurance three by Hutch Russell. And Carl Albert Titans are back on top by one. You know, he's confident, Hutches, when he knows he's going to shoot it. Now a takeaway by Jaden Hopkins. He goes up, lays it off the glass for two. Now, he's the man of the hour right now. If the press for Carl Albert when they're trapping isn't working, but that's the case of just playing, applying good one-on-one pressure in Elizondo. And what a play by Jaden Hopkins. Three-point lead by Carl Albert. Elizondo goes to the hole. Spins that one. Looked like it was going in, and it had so much spin on it, it came back out of the rim. Everything went in there. Jaden Hopkins flies in and lays it off the glass for another bucket. Now he hits the backstop there pretty thankfully hard. It's, thankfully it's padded. He looks okay. Yeah, he did hit it hard. 12 points for Jaden Hopkins in the first half. Timeout called on the floor. Coach Hayden of El Reno talking to the officials, not happy about something. We've got a full timeout, so we'll take one as well here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Have you ever seen an insurance commercial and ask yourself, are they really telling me the truth? Well, guess what? They're not. Somebody runs a red light and you think all of a sudden their insurance company's gonna be all neighborly about it? (laughs) Insurance companies aren't in the business of saving you money. They're in the business of keeping your money. So remember, save our number in your phone so when tragedy strikes. Call Robin Will. Oklahoma Sports Network, Tracy Musset, Jordan Ray, back at Piedmont High School where the Carl Albert Titans have just opened up what is now their biggest lead of the game, five points, 26-21 over the El Reno Indians. The one thing that strikes me is the first time I've seen El Reno play this year, this is a really quality basketball team, and they finish mm-hmm. fourth place behind Carl Albert, Guthrie, oh. and Crossings Christian. So strong, they beat, strong they beat Crossings, yeah. Yeah, Rowan knows in the paint. Pivoting, Jaden Hopkins goes up in the air, gets on his back. Foul called on Hopkins, and yep. foul's called on the floor. If Romanos is going to post up Hopkins, Hopkins can't let him catch it that close to the basket. Now the challenge is Jaden Hopkins has been, as you said a minute ago, man of the hour, but he has yeah. three fouls now here in the second period. Black Wolf goes in, offensive foul call. Brandon Rogers holds his ground. Brandon Rogers comes in, and he makes stuff happen. He's such a fundamentally sound player. 
it's amazing, you know, we're seeing Xavier Garcia in, and no Marcus James, and no Ryan Reynolds, but especially Marcus James has not played at all this quarter. I didn't think he was too bad in the first quarter. There's a steal by Roman Nose. He's headed all the way to the hole. Does a good job avoiding Hutch Russell. Goes up and lays it off the glass for two. See that in the super substance and replay. Carl Albert's had some problems passing the ball in the perimeter. They're underestimating El Reno's speed. Well, you know, Roman Nose, deceptively long reach as well. Boom! Oh. Brendan Rogers drains another Bobby Lewis. Insurance three. Man, can he be a gamer? And that three was impressive because he did a pass fake first. You don't usually see th made threes like that. Elizondo to Black Wolf. Black Wolf for three. It's long. Rebound by Hutch Russell. Russell getting the ball back down the court now. Crosses the timeline. And folks need to go and let you know, the Bobby Lewis Insurance, you can reach him in Dell City at 405-670-3665. Uh, he has surprisingly great rates. He also has a location in Choctaw. Quincy Hopkins pulls up for the mid-range jumper. Shot no good. Ball bounces around. Black Wolf pulls it down. Six-point lead for Carl Albert. Rogers. Job, Rogers. Because... When El Reno is able to push the ball effectively, a lot of times it's down the sideline. And when they get the ball to a wing player like Romanos, they've been able to attack out of that action. And so Rogers disrupts that. It's going to make El Reno start over with their possession. And now we see Marcus James in. 29-23 the score. Eight seconds on the clock. Black Wolf attacking, pushing Marcus James away. A travel call on Black Wolf. Good defense by James. No, I don't know why Black Wolf was trying to do that. He's, he gives up a few inches to Marcus James. He thought that was a good matchup for him. It's not. I don't think it's a great matchup. We're going to see a, it was a good job for Marcus James just holding his ground. And because of his height, that would have been a hard shot for Black Wolf to make. Now Marcus James will come out because of offense because this is a quarter's about to end. They want to get Jaden Hopkins in. Jaden Hopkins zooming down the court and run out of time as they just created a lane down the side for him. He never could get to the paint. 29-23, the score at halftime. Carl Albert Titans lead the El Reno Indians here in this Class 5A area consolation game. Carl Albert looking to be the fifth team from the Middell School District to punch their ticket to the state tournament. Dell City boys coming up after this game tonight. It is halftime here, 29-23. We're going to take a break on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Let's say we go to Scissor Tech. Ready to go get some coffee? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I think she was from One, State. One, two, three. Congratulations, Rose State College graduates. Red Plains Plumbing has been offering reliable commercial and residential services to the OKC metro area for over a decade. From new construction and remodeling to residential repair, they can handle jobs of all sizes. When you need a trusted name in plumbing, it's Red Plains Plumbing. Family owned and operated. Phone 405-769-1922. That's 405-769-1922. Experience the best wash in town at Tommy's Express. You'll love our open and bright tunnels, easy loading flat belt conveyor, unlimited membership, and free vacuums and mat washers. Experience the difference and visit Tommy's Express today. If you've lived in Oklahoma long enough, you'll know that we get extreme weather. With that extreme weather comes hail damage to your roof and an insurance claim. When that happens, there's not a better company to deal with on your insurance claim than Cantrell Roofing and Construction. Since 1987, Cantrell Roofing and Construction has proven to be the best in the business. And always remember, got hail? Call Cantrell. Call them at 405-642-642. 
8558.
Oklahoma Sports Network, Tracy Mussett, Jordan Ray back at Piedmont High School. Carl Albert Titans battling to punch their ticket to the state tournament here in this final area game. They lead by six at halftime, 29-23 over the El Reno Indians. During the first half, Jordan, we had eight ties, three lead changes uh, during that first half. Carl Albert, a couple of buckets by Jaden Hopkins late in the uh, second period allowed them to go ahead and pull away, and there was some threes hit. Brandon Rogers coming up big when in his minutes there in the second period as well. Uh, Hutch Russell coming in, hitting a three late in the three, uh, late in the second, that allowed the Carl Albert to go ahead and extend that lead. But you mentioned multiple times some carelessness with some passes. Yes, I mean you, you can't underestimate El Reno's speed. You also have you can't underestimate how fundamentally sound they are. On when, so when you're on defense, you have to be ready for backdoor cuts and other off the ball action. Another big three though, Brandon Rogers. So he's had a good first half for him, and that's been real important because we haven't seen. Ryan Reynolds yet get going from three-point range. And Quincy Hopkins has had his moments, but for the most part has not been as efficient as Carl Albert probably needs him to be. Jaden Hopkins what a task with what a move to the basket. He has 14 uh, points now. Uh, he does not need space the way the other guards for Carl Albert does, and it's really incredible. And it's good because El Reno's not going to give you a lot of space. Oh, there's Quincy. Quincy Hopkins with the steal and the breakaway dunk. There's the super subs instant replay. I mean, that will get him to have a, a better second half. He's guarding Carter Romanos right now, so he's going to be very active on defense. Uh, Jaden Hopkins was tasked with guarding Romanos a lot in the first half. Quincy yes. now guarding him here in the second. Romanos off the glass, good for two. He has ten points in the ball game. And Quincy Hopkins guarded him really well, and Romanos just made a good shot. And that that's that's fundamentals. Knowing how, if you want to use the backboard in that situation, so. Very impressive two points there. So Carl Albert quickly extended their lead to 10. It's now at 8 after that bucket by Roman Nose. Marcus James puts up a nice. shot, hits it, and the lead's back to 10. Here in this Casa Juanito third period. Casa Juanito, a quick service restaurant offering fresh and flavorful Fiesta meals in Dell City, Oklahoma. Since 1976, located at 4718 Southeast 29th Street in Dell City. That's just west of Sooner Road. Black Wolf going up for the layup, and Marcus James getting the block. James doing his job on defense here. Yeah, and you also saw, as you see the Super Subs replay, Marcus James with a really good post move the previous trip. Black Wolf again trying to drive in on James. James holding him off. And now Elizondo. Pass to Black Wolf. Gets loose from him, but he chases it down. Jaden Hopkins tips the ball. Elizondo picks it back up, goes high off the glass, and drops it in for two. There's some talented scorers yeah. on the floor between these two teams. And now Hopkins throws the ball right into the hands of Elizondo. He's going to the hole. Misses the layup. Roman knows. Does that count? Goes for the there dunk. Count it. With the rim being up. grabbed. He grabbed the rim, and the ball fell in. That should have been a... I thought it might be. Yeah, I, I don't know how that I don't know how it works, but I would have thought that would have been a goaltend. A lot of I think Coach Price was calling for it as well. I thought six point lead now. Reynolds for three. Shot blocked by Roman Nose. Elizondo comes up with a rebound, and Marcus James is going to get called for a foul. Yeah, I mean it, it's a couple bad offensive possessions for Carl Albert. You know these El Reno guards will they'll. Gamble, not just gamble, but they'll be they'll have active hands and they'll get some steals on you if you're not careful. Back to a six-point game right where we were at halftime. 35-29 the score, 514 left to play in this Casa Juanito third period. Elizondo loses his dribble, chases it down, and a quick foul. That's going to be number four on Jaden Hopkins. Yeah, and it's because they're actually playing good defense, but he was just too too handsy on that play. I think if you have three fouls in this situation, you shouldn't even be trying to reach in. Just well, don't try. And you know, we've seen that a lot in this playoffs. Players in foul trouble, they just can't help themselves sometimes. Who else was out there with him? Was it on, on D there? Quincy, his brother, was. Yeah, so it looked like Quincy had, a, had it tied up. And then the ball came loose just a little bit, which I think is why Jaden reached in. But still, I, I agree with you. You've got to be careful. And he's way too valuable offensively to not have him on the court right now. 
Ravellis driving in, puts up the bucket, and the lead's down to four. That's Ravellis' first yeah. points of the ball game. So See, Reno's guards doing a good job now, finding their spots and going right at their man-to-man -man defenders. Anderson of the game, Hutch Russell, Ryan Reynolds, Quincy Hopkins, Marcus James. Anderson on the left wing, driving. Hutch Russell in the corner, picks up his dribble, finds Marcus James. James working to the, working to the hole, and foul called. First on El Reno this quarter. And that goes against Phoenix White Shirt, his third personal first team foul. Marcus James has such a size advantage in there over yeah. any of these El Reno players. Maybe height wise, not over Roman Nose, but it looks um, like he looks so much stronger than the rest. So Black Wolf will switch onto Marcus James as El Reno goes smaller. They bring a guard in to replace White Shirt. Russell on the left wing, four-point lead for Carl Albert, four minutes to play in the third period. Quincy Hopkins finds a lane, goes up, draws the foul. That foul's going on Bradley Island. It's got to be Quincy's game now. He hasn't shot well. He's had some turnovers. He's missed some free throws. He's made some good shots, too. He got a steal and a score earlier this quarter. And now his brother, who's been the best player for Carl Albert this game, in foul trouble. Quincy's got to take over. He's got to be efficient, which that, that doesn't help. His uh, free throws are looking really flat, uh, yeah. including his earlier uh, trip to the free throw line. He's 0 for 3 from the free throw line now in the game. The Tooney buys houses free throws. Second shot's up. A little more arch on that one, and it gets over the front of the rim. The lead is at 5 for Carl Albert. Roman Nose brings the ball down the court. And it's a 6-0 run for El Reno. Romano's going to the hole. Wow. I don't know how that went in, but it does. Again, Quincy defended it well. Now a three-point lead for Carl Albert. Reynolds the high post, bounces outside. Hopkins looking inside. Marcus Shane posting up. Russell for three. Shot no good, Roman knows with the rebound. Gets it to Black Wolf down the court. Black Wolf going to the hole and blocking foul on Hutch Russell and the bucket, I believe. Not good transition defense. You give up to see the super subs replay. You give up the rebound and you should just have Hutch Russell and Marcus James back. This was a 10 point lead for Carl Albert a moment ago. So Black Wolf gets the bucket and the foul. He's gonna be shooting the Tooney buys houses free throw. And now we're going to see LeBron Royal check into the game for Marcus James. Brandon Rogers comes in for Hutch Russell. Russell picked up his first personal third team foul. And Black Wolf can tie it up from the free throw line. He misses the free throw. Reynolds gets the rebound. Got to meet Ryan Reynolds' dad at halftime. Had a good conversation with him. Well, I've met him before Buffalo Wild Wings. Very complimentary of the work we do. Quincy Hopkins picks up his dribble, has to pass it off. Steven Anderson driving in. Royal across the court on the baseline, throws the ball out of bounds, intended for Ryan Reynolds. Titans yep. hanging on to this one-point lead. but they're, they're imploding a bit as Carl Albert without uh, Jaden Hopkins in. Elizondo brings the ball down the court now. Anderson on D. Black Wolf. LeBron Royal doing a good job defending him. Royal will be called for the foul. Well, you knew they wanted to go there when with Marcus James out. Black Wolf has the body of a post player. Very strong, not tall. But now he's got someone similar in height with Royal. And now he's going against Royal again. This time, ball goes out of bounds. Black Wolf loses it, and it's Carl Albert Ball. Well, he's not going to just out-muscle LeBron. It's gonna, that's, those are two strong guys. Short as far as post players go, but they're not short on strength. Short as far as height goes. Anderson on the right wing. Carl Albert still the one-point lead here. We have not had a lead change in the second half. Two and a half minutes 
to play in this Buffalo Wild Wings third, excuse me, in this Casa Juanito third period. Anderson back to Quincy Hopkins in the paint, pulls up 10 feet, shot's no good. And the ball's going to stay with Carl Albert. Baseline inbound play coming for the Titans and a timeout called by Coach Price. 30-second timeout. First, first timeout for Carl Albert. Two minutes and nine seconds to play in this Casa Juanito third period. It was a six-point lead for Carl Albert at halftime. They extended it to 10 very quickly in the third period. And then El Reno has chipped away at it, and now it's a one-point ball game, 36-35. Yeah, and I think uh, that a lot of that's to do with when Jaden Hopkins got his fourth, fourth foul. I think Arena had a couple baskets before that. But Carl Albert's offense has just not found anything since then. Uh, and Quincy saw that fadeaway he shot, and then he had a hand right in his face. When he shoots it well, he doesn't really fade away. He pulls up and is able to get enough separation from his defender that he, can, he has a really good look, a really clean look. But he didn't have one there. Carl Albert's fortunate to still have the ball. Reynolds takes the inbound pass. Quincy Hopkins, fadeaway jumper, front of the rim, and going to be a foul on Carl Albert on the rebound. That's, that's going to be free throws for El Reno. It's just a bad sequence, and Quincy Hopkins has got to figure out a way to get better shots than that. LeBron Royal called for the foul, his second personal fifth team foul on Carl Albert. That puts... Caleb Blackwolf, the line, shooting the Tooney Buys Houses free throws. Now, he is one for three uh, from the line right now. First one's up, and we are tied up. Hutch will come in for LeBron, so they're going to have a smaller guy, maybe Ryan Runnels defending Blackwolf. Two minutes to play in the third. Black Wolf with the chance to put El Reno back on top. Shots up, and it's good. Carl Albert. Steven Anderson brings the ball down the court. Anderson goes around Island, lays it off the glass, and one for Steven Anderson, putting Carl Albert right back on top. See, I didn't know if Steven Anderson could do that. Um, I knew he could do a lot of things that Jaden Hopkins could do, but that's a, di that's a different level. Exploding to the basket even when there's two or three other players there for you, but you get there so quick that all they can do is foul you, and that is a huge play for Carl Albert because they've been in a drought from the field. Ravellis called for the foul, his second personal third team foul. Anderson gets the old-fashioned three points as he hits the Tooney Buys Houses free throw, and the lead is two now for Carl Albert. Pass inside to Black Wolf, Quincy Hopkins on D. Affects the play and gets the rebound. Brandon Rogers with the ball right to the hole, lays it over the front of the rim, and Rogers has seven points. Super subs replay, and Brandon Rogers makes things happen. I wouldn't be surprised if he plays a lot of minutes in the fourth quarter. Roman Nose, deep three, boom, it's a Bobby Lewis insurance three for Carter Roman Nose. Roman Nose has 17 points in the ball game. It's a one point game again. Anderson kicks it out to Russell, pass goes a little wide. Russell chases it down. Anderson in the paint. Goes over Roman Nose. Count it. And one. Roman Nose set to take, take the charge. Super subs instant replay. Well, something clicked, and maybe that probably that time up by Coach Price, because the Carl Albert offense is now come alive in the half court setting. They're not relying on transition because Steven Anderson, a sophomore, and Brandon Rogers, a sophomore. Two reserves have been making plays, especially Steven Anderson. Three-point lead for Carl Albert. Anderson can make it four here at the line with the Tooney Buys Houses free throws. Four fouls now on El Reno, five on Carl Albert. So we've got free throws for any foul other than offensive foul from here on out. Anderson again connects on the extra free throw, and the lead's to four for Carl Albert. 55 seconds to play in the Casa Juanito third period. Romano is trying to go right to the hole, has to pass it back off. Good defense once again on Romano's by Carl Albert. 
Romano's throwing it to Island, throws it over his head and into the score table. Turnover for El Reno and Carl Albert to get the ball back with 40 seconds to play in the period. Now that's a great job for Carl Albert across the board, defending against the dribble. And yeah, they should try to hold for a last shot because you give El Reno enough time and you commit a foul maybe on a missed shot like they, they happened a moment ago. That's not how you want to end the quarter. Nearing the 22nd mark here in the third. Reynolds and Anderson playing catch to avoid a five-second count. Now needs to go. Now we're at the 10-second mark. Island backs up. Reynolds sets a screen. Anderson goes off screen, pulls up from the free throw line. Shot no good. And an attempt by Black Wolf goes into the scoreboard. He, he really went way too early with that. He had a, another second or two left. He could have taken, but that's after three. El Reno outscores Car Carl Albert by two in the third. After three, Carl Albert still with a four-point lead. We're going to take a break on the Oklahoma Sports Network. College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. Oklahoma Sports Network, Tracy Mussett, Jordan Ray, back at Piedmont High School. It is Class 5A boys area consolation game. We're three periods down. The Carl Albert Titans lead the El Reno Indians 44-40. This game is for all the marbles. The winner goes to the state tournament next week. The loser season ends here. It looks like maybe we have a little bit of blood out on the court, near half court. They're cleaning up here at the break. Not yeah. sure who might, might have been bleeding. It might be a sweat puddle. I don't know if you. I don't know if you would clean blood with shoes, unless I guess you're just unless you've already sprayed. I didn't see that though. Well, they do, yeah, and it, I mean they put the gloves on and got some chemicals out. I, yeah, then you would. Yeah, normally you wouldn't do that for sweat. You do it for blood. So, right. So, but maybe once it all cleared up and you're just trying to get the residue of the spray off, then you use your feet. We think there might have been a discussion about the possession arrow at the end of the period. It looks like Carl Albert's going to have the ball to begin the fourth period. Again, leading by four. Fourth period brought to you by Rose State College. Rose State College parents, if you want to save money on college and help your student get ahead by earning college credit in high school, use concurrent enrollment. Rose State College makes it easy and very affordable. Apply today at rose.edu forward slash concurrent. What was that? Quincy Hopkins throws an inbound pass. that I honestly thought it was going to go through the uh, – in the rim at one point, but it goes all the way past the backboard out of bounds. And the problem and with that pass is Quincy has to commit to it before he, there's really anyone open, there's, and there's never anyone open. Marcus James was the intended receiver. Get that? You know, he's a, a football tight end. But uh, he was never open there. Oh, the quarter hadn't ended. The quarter had not that was ended. It. That's, That's why happened. I did all that. Yes. <laughs> I just realized that as you were talking. Well, they stopped play then for the residue, I guess, because it wasn't a foul in it, or else there would have been free throws. So the, the long shot by Black Wolf hit the scoreboard, which stopped the clock. Okay, now it makes sense. Uh, and so that left to like a second and a half on the clock. We weren't ever had the ball. So now we're, we're look at the clock. Now we've got three, three periods down. 44 to 40 is the score. We're going to go ahead and take another break here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Shop. Let's say we go to Scissor Tech. Can we go get some coffee? Yeah, let's go. You got it. <laughs> I think she was from One, Rose State. One, two, three. Congratulations, Rose State College graduates. Oh, 
Oklahoma Sports Network, Tracy Mussett, Jordan Ray, back at Piedmont High School, Class 5A. Area consolation game, Carl Albert Titans lead 44-40 over the El Reno Indians. We're beginning the fourth period of play, brought to you by Rose State College. And then we had a little confusing there, confusion at the end of the third. Black Wolf had thrown a pass, a, a, a shot, excuse me, from way down the court as time was expiring, but he actually did a little early. It hit the scoreboard, which caused the clock to stop. So there was a couple of seconds left on the clock, and that's what transpired there in that end of that, that third period. And, and we didn't realize that the clock had stopped, and we're all caught up now. So we are underway in the fourth period. Seven and a half minutes to play now. A turnover by Carl Albert. And that explains what Marcus James is in, and now he's back out of the game. And we see Steven Anderson with a, his feet were too lively there. Elizondo hands the ball off to Ravellis. Right back to Elizondo, pulls up from the elbow, front of the rim. Reynolds pulling down some rebounds here in the second yeah. half. He has done that. He hasn't hit three yet. Now Hopkins, Quincy Hopkins that is. His brother Jaden Hopkins is on the bench with four fouls. Not sure how long Coach Price will wait to put him back in, but he was a powerhouse offensively early in the game. I was about to mention that. When will we see him back in? Probably not yet with a four-point lead. Romano's doing a good job with his hands there on Quincy Hopkins. Quincy's about to get a five count. And that is it, five-second count. And I think Coach Price, who has four timeouts, El Reno has three, wanted, he's about to call one, I think. Romano's gets the ball down the court. Deceptively in a hurry and a long three is just an air ball. Now, he hit a longer three, when I say longer, I mean not from the line, but a little bit with uh, distance earlier, but that was a surprising shot. El Reno's forced three bad jump shots. Thankful, and, thankful and for Carl Albert, or good for Carl Albert, because Carl Albert has had a couple of bad possessions too with turnovers. Hutch Russell three, front of the rim. Black Wolf gets the rebound. Got a scoring drought going on between the two teams here in the fourth period. Now Roman knows. In the corner to Island. Nursing a four point lead here, Carl Albert. Island pivots, gets inside, kicks it back out. Somebody's going to drive in a moment, and there's Roman Nose. Fouls called on, on the floor. Rogers. I don't know if he's had one yet. No, he has two. That is his second. First personal, uh, second personal, first team foul on Carl Albert here in the fourth period. Black Wolf will inbound the ball. Island for three, front of the rim. Quincy Hopkins gets up in the air and pulls down the rebound. Good, good positioning, good defensive rebound position we're seeing from Carl Albert right now. Hopkins pass tipped. And a timeout by Coach Price. It's going to be a full timeout. We are a little over two minutes in the fourth period. No one scored in the fourth. The score is still 44-40. Carl Albert will take a break on the Oklahoma Sports Network. If you've lived in Oklahoma long enough, you'll know that we get extreme weather. With that extreme weather comes hail damage to your roof and an insurance claim. When that happens, there's not a better company to deal with on your insurance claim than Cantrell Roofing and Construction. Since 1987, Cantrell Roofing and Construction has proven to be the best in the business. And always remember, got hail? Call Cantrell. Call them at 405-642-8558. Oklahoma Sports Network, Tracy Mustard, Jordan Ray, back at Piedmont High School, where the Carl Albert Titans are just holding on to a four-point lead over the El Reno Indians, 44-40. This is an elimination game. Winner goes to state. Season ends for the other team here tonight. Class 5A. So last time Carl Albert used a timeout about late in the third quarter, they started to have some really good possessions on offense. This was without Jaden Hopkins. And so maybe this timeout was also to get them set on what they want to do on offense. We are five and a half minutes left to play in the Rose State College fourth period here. Carl Albert has beaten this team twice by 18 and 17 
earlier in the season. Hard to beat a team three times. We've said that multiple times already, and it's proving to be true here tonight. Something else we should say, as Steven Erickson wasn't looking, he was open. Roman Nose steps to the passing lane, picks off the pass. Three by Elizondo, it's short. And Quincy Hopkins gets another rebound. He might have had some turnovers in the game, but he's definitely yep. doing his job on the boards. And right Hopkins there. goes up, and the foul is called, I believe, on Black Wolf. So what I was going to say is Carl Albert has made 5A Boys State 13 straight years. 2010 was the last year they didn't make it. And I would say that isn't jeopardy. Even though they have a four-point lead, there's so much that can happen in Reno. They're, they're cold right now, but that doesn't last. Quincy Hopkins again. And there's that problem. Hard and flat from the free throw line. One of five. He's the Tooney Buys Houses free throws. Call Tooney Buys Houses for a cash offer on your house today at 405-931-3046. Hopkins hits the second after missing the first. And it's a five-point lead for Carl Albert. Black Wolf brings the ball up the court. Hopkins, mm. a little body contact. Lucky not to have a foul call on him there. Lucky didn't lead to a Reno easy shot. Roman nose for three. Front of the rim. Steven Anderson gets up in the air and pulls down the rebound for Carl Albert. Now that was a good three for El Reno's best offensive player. Just didn't fall. Anderson picks up his dribble. Tosses it out to Rogers. Rogers does a good job of just tipping the ball over. Reynolds for three in the corner. Boom! It's the Pavel Lewis insurance three. Ryan Reynolds. It looked like uh, El Reno might have had a, a transition off a of make, but they're calling a timeout. And uh, but the problem there was I didn't catch who it was. It may have been Ravelis, but an El Reno defender gambled, and that led to rotation by El Reno's defense that led to Ryan Reynolds doing his thing, making a corner three. And, yeah, I don't know what timeout it is. It looks like a full, but. Well, let's go ahead and I want to talk about Bobby Lewis insurance. Yeah, we haven't been able to mention him a lot tonight. There haven't been many threes made in the ball game. He does sponsor our three-point shots. He has surprisingly great rates. He has two locations to serve you, one in Choctaw. You can reach him in Choctaw. The phone number is 405-281-6700. Or call him in Dell City at 405-670-3665. Bobby Lewis insurance four and a half minutes to play the lead is back to eight and it's just taken a couple of buckets to get it there some good play Quincy Hopkins driving in getting that free throw the three-point shot by Ryan Reynolds he loves that corner over there yes he loves all the corners and he he's good at it he can make it and he hadn't made one yet this game but He'll keep shooting it, and that was obviously significant um, as Carl Albert was trailing at one point after having a 10-point lead in the third quarter. So this has been an amazing back-and-forth game, and now they're back up by eight. Still a lot of time for El Reno, and you would think out of the timeout they got a really good coach in Rodney Hayden. They're going to have some type of play design or some type of purpose on offense that will lead to their first good shot as they have not scored yet in this fourth quarter. Important uh, point here, only one foul on each team, so no one – uh, close to being in the bonus yet. Romano's driving on Rogers, gets around him, goes up. It's going to be an and one for Carter Romano's. There we go. Get it to Romano's, and instead of looking for the three like he had been, he goes to the basket and gets an and one. Very timely. That's why the Salarino's going to stay in it. Brandon Rogers called for the, his third personal foul, third, excuse me, second team foul on Carl Albert. Romano's getting the Tooney Buys Houses free throw. I'm surprised we don't see more defenders in these situations. Just try to force them to their offhand. Romanos obviously wants to go right. He can, like most right-handed wings who can score, he finishes better to his right. See if he can't make him go left. 48-42 the score. Four minutes to play here in the Rose State College fourth period. Romanos misses the free throw. Rebound by Black Wolf. And... Boy. A foul called on Steven Anderson. Just uh, falling asleep there. You got you to gotta get your defense rebounding position better than that. Carl Alberts had a good defensive rebounding quarter up to that point. Anderson picks up his first personal third team foul on Carl Albert. Elizondo got in the air, almost in trouble. Now pass down low to Black Wolf. He does a good job, goes right to the hole and scores. 
And it's back to a four-point game, 48-44. Jaden Hopkins back in the game now for Carl Albert. Just under four minutes to play. Steven Anderson drives to the hole. Misses a Whoa, shot. Oh, what a tip in. Tipped in by Quincy Hopkins. Now Elizondo pushing the ball down the court. Six-point lead for Carl Albert. Black Wolf takes the pass. In the paint and a foul on Quincy Hopkins. That's his second personal fourth team foul on Carl Albert. So with 3.19 to play in the ball game, El Reno will have free throws on the next Carl Albert foul. Roman knows to inbound the ball for El Reno. White shirt takes the inbound pass. Ball's batted. El Reno comes up with it. Now Elizondo driving in oh. a foul called. Anderson is uh, for the second time getting animated about protesting a foul. He's got to be careful. Because he didn't foul his hands. He didn't reach. Anderson called for his second personal. Fifth team foul on Carl Albert. And Elizondo shooting Tooney buys houses free Ooh. throws. Just kisses the front of the rim. Shot no good. All right, Cedric so Crawford, you know you gave up two points because you didn't rebound the last miss free throw. That was a live one. All four of them needs to be involved here. Elizondo's second shot is up. This one's good. And the lead is 5, 50 to 45 with three minutes and five seconds on the clock. Full court pressure by El Reno. Elizondo almost got up in the air high enough to get his hands on that high pass. He's done that a couple times. Jaden Hopkins running point. And foul called on Black Wolf. That'll be the second team foul on El Reno. I like Quincy Hopkins posting up. He's got a big body. We don't see it much. We don't see him do it much. But we want to try to get close to the basket there. Four personal fouls on Caleb Blackwolf. He's going to take a seat for, a, I don't imagine, very long. But Bradley Island checks into the game for El Reno. Well, Reno's not fine on defense because Marcus James isn't in. So Carl Albert's also with a smaller lineup. Hopkins got a taller player on him, but a skinnier player. Phoenix white shirt. Yeah. Quincy Hopkins bounce, bounces outside. They're in the two and a half minute mark here in the Rose State College fourth period. Hopkins gets three defenders on him. Gets in a little trouble. Oh, what a play. Anderson cuts to the basket and Hopkins finds him. Wow. I thought he was toast. I thought he was going to have another turnover. Roman knows oh. foul call to Ryan Reynolds. That's just, you got to be smarter than that if you're Ryan Reynolds. That's what can keep El Reno in the game right now because they're, they're, in the, they're in the bonus. Ronald said no chance at that ball. Romano's passed off to Elizondo. It was a bad pass. Elizondo couldn't handle it. And as he was trying to scoop the ball up, Reynolds got a hold of his arm. Seven-point lead for Carl Albert. Elizondo shooting the Tooney Buys Houses free throws just like last time. He misses yep. the first. So, And you still got to be wary of the fact that he misses this one. And, of course, Blackwell's not in. He... He's probably the guy that you would worry about getting on the offensive glass. Elizondo hits the second. And timeout called by, is that by Coach Price? Um, oh, it's a 30-second no. timeout. I think it's still Reno calling the timeout. Yeah, it is. So a 30-second timeout, six-point lead for Carl Albert with 2.16 left to play here in the Rose State College fourth period. I want to remind you, we got Dell City Guthrie coming up next. Guthrie, a different shade of blue than El Reno's navy. But uh, Dell City, similar colors to Carl Albert. And, of course, they have a streak to Dell City when it comes to Kansas State. And they don't usually play these games. They? I don't think they've played in this game um, since 2018. Uh, not talking about that, I mean a uh, consolation area championship game. They've been winning the area championships for the last several years. But they're here, and you know that they'll, they'll come to play, especially since they didn't end the game against Elgin very well, and you know it's going to give 
Coach Hatchett something to really get onto his team about. And, of course, Guthrie coming off a double overtime yep. game may, may have tired legs. These young men are a lot more resilient than, my, than, than I am with my body. I know that. Uh, yes. I can, <laughs> same for me. Well, that was really risky by Jaden Hopkins. He was trying to get to the, down the sideline. He had no step there and was fortunate to draw a foul. Bradley Island called for the third personal foul, third team foul as well. Jaden Hopkins in the front court. Trapped by Island and Elizondo, and Elizondo pokes the ball out of bounds. I thought we were about to have a timeout by Carl Albert. Jaden Hopkins is very fortunate there. He cannot do that. You can't just dribble to that corner, pass the timeline, and pick up your dribble. Because you're, you're in what I call a dead man's corner. You have very few options at that point. Anderson takes the ball now. Revelous on D. Anderson goes up for the shot. Quincy Hopkins battling. The ball goes out of bounds off Hopkins' hand. And it'll be... El Reno ball with a minute 51 left to play. So, I mean, right now, Carl Albert's relying on three sophomores on the floor. And I think they, needs to be, they need to be told, you don't, yeah, you want to attack the basket, but you want an open layup. If it's not there, drive and kick. You don't force anything. Black Wolf back in the game for El Reno. Elizondo drives in, shot no good. Quincy Hopkins with a takeaway. It's a three-on-two fast break for El for Carl Albert. Hopkins dishes to Anderson. Good sharing of the ball. He's made some plays as Quincy Hopkins. Not all scoring. And a foul on Brandon Rogers as he's backing up. The Roman Nose puts a shoulder into him, pushes him back, and gets the bucket and uh, the free throw. See, the thing is, I don't know what to tell Brandon Rogers about that. But it's tempting to try to help more on Romano's dropping the basket. Romano's he misses. Unbelievable. This is another free throw with the Tooney Buys Houses free throw. Anderson pushing the ball up the court. Crosses the timeline. Elizondo cuts him off. Ireland got there pretty quick as the pass went to Jaden Hopkins. Hopkins headed to the hole. Oh, he got fouled before he knocked down uh, Elizondo. Jaden Hopkins could have been called yeah. for an offensive foul, but as you said, the whistle blew and he was fouled right prior to him running in. And the thing is, you don't, he was kind of out of control. It's not going to be free throws for Carl, so they're going to have another possession here. It should only be something easy. And look at that, almost a bad play. Boy, the Carl Albert's living on the edge here. And ball taken away. Romanos comes up with it. Now that Hop Hopkins is a little out of control here, as good as he's played. 58 seconds on the clock. And now then he, he makes gets up a for steal. It. Going the other way, goes up, lays it off the glass for two. What a sequence. I mean, he, he's trying to split defenders, and that's never worked for Carl Albert this game, whether it's either Hopkins' brother trying to do that. And they're not doing a good job of finding the open guy when they're getting trapped like that, but... Right, and this has happened to me much of the playoffs. I criticize someone when they make a play. And occasionally I'll say they're a good free throw shooter they miss. That's, uh, that's my type of way of helping out <laughs> some of these guys. Six point, excuse me, eight point lead for Carl Albert now with 47.4 seconds. Yes, point four, folks. Once we get under a minute, we put the tenths on there. 47.4 seconds left in this Rose State College fourth period. Carl Albert has the eight point lead after the steal and layup by Jaden Hopkins. Jaden Hopkins had 12 points in the first half, got in some foul trouble, sat on the bench for a while. He has 16 points in the ball game now. He's had a phenomenal basketball game. A couple of careless plays offensively right after he came in, maybe feeling like he had to yeah. come in and be a difference maker, uh, a little too much pressure, but then he makes the great defensive play that leads to transition bucket for him. His brother Quincy Hopkins was making mistakes early when Jaden was the one who was doing everything right. Quincy has been a phenomenal player down the stretch, making some great, uh, having some great assists and looks under the basket, sharing with Steven Anderson, who's been in the right place to be on the receiving end of that. And then we've got occasional three by Hutch Russell and Ryan Reynolds, and we've got an eight-point lead now for Carl Albert. So Carl Albert, you don't want to foul, but it's hard to avoid sometimes. Make him shoot a tough shot. Oh, almost. Quincy. That's a good foul on Quincy. I mean, that's a good call, I should say. Not a good foul by Quincy Hopkins. Well, Quincy Hopkins made a yeah. great defensive play knocking the ball loose, and then yeah. going for the loose ball, yeah. it, it happens, that's, right? 
Sometimes when you have an opportunity on defense, looks like you can get the ball. Sometimes something bad will happen too. It's just the nature of basketball. That, otherwise, you would hate to commit that foul. But, man, El Reno. Phoenix I'm White shirt misses the Tooney Buys houses. Free throw. I'm just shocked because El Reno does so many things well fundamentally. they got good offensive players across the board. who They run good off. They, they really pass the ball well around the basket. They are an intense defensive team. It's surprising that the, the free throws aren't going in. And yeah. White shirt hits that one. They're three of eight in the fourth period. I'm going to foul right away. And that will be free throws for Jaden Hopkins. That's the third foul on Roman Nose. Fifth foul on El Reno. His brother has struggled some from the free throw line. I believe two of six. Jaden Hopkins is 0 of 1 from the free yeah. throw line in the ballgame. That's surprising that the Hopkins brothers have they've done a lot well this game. With the Tooney buys houses free throws by Jaden Hopkins. And remind you folks, he does get two under the new rules. And Jaden Hopkins, that free throw looked a lot like Quincy's. It was a little flat and a, a little hard. We're going to see a defense for offense. So Marcus James, who hasn't played much in the fourth quarter, I think uh, against Del Reno, Coach Price wants a more guard-oriented lineup, but it's going to come in for defense here. Jaden Hopkins taking his time. Second shot is up. That one's over the front of the rim and out. Ball goes out of bounds off of Marcus James' hand. He did a good job of trying to make something happen there. Yeah, but if he got called for a foul, that would have been really bad. <laughs> Seven-point lead for Carl Albert. 56-49, 33 seconds to play in the Rose State College fourth period. Roman Nose for three. Back iron, no good. Jaden Hopkins with the rebound. It's a two-on-one, but Hop Hopkins looked like he was going to attack there, trying to use a little clock up. Anderson backs up. Marcus James takes the pass under the basket, lays that one in. That's going to do it. So we got another Middell State team. It's the Carl Albert Boys basketball team. They pulled it off. Make that 14 in a row for Jay Price. Elizondo pulls a uh, three just before the buzzer sounds. A nine-point lead, and we'll call it a nine-point win for Carl Albert, 58-49. Fourth period brought to you by Rose State College. Folks, well, our starting line is sponsored by Dynamic Health Clinic. Our free throws by Tooney Buys Houses. Three-point shots by Bobby Lewis Insurance. Instant replays sponsored by Super Subs. Our player of the game, who we'll announce here shortly, sponsored by the Eastside Church of Christ. And our different quarters sponsored by Sherpa Moving, Buffalo Wild Wings, Casa Juanito, and Rose State College. Eastside Church of Christ. By the way, we can go ahead and get the uh, Eastside Church of Christ logo up there. The Eastside Church of Christ believes in loving Jesus, and we do that by loving our neighbors. Folks, I'm one of the ministers at the Eastside Church of Christ. We just try to take care of people in our community. And one of the ways we do that, next Saturday on March the 9th, we are having a community baby shower. That means if you have a child under the age of three or if you are expecting a child, you are invited out to the Eastside Church of Christ. We'll meet in our family center on the east side of our parking lot at 1 p.m. Uh, we have gift bags with diapers and all sorts of other supplies. We have different resources and organizations available that may have uh, some things available for you that you need. And we have some door prizes like car seats and strollers and play pens. Eastside Church of Christ located at 916 South Douglas Boulevard. We have Bible class at 9 on Sundays, 10 a.m., uh, is our worship service, and we also have a midweek Bible study at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. EastsideChurchOfChrist.org is our website, and we sponsor the player of the game. Carl Albert receives their plaque for winning the area consolation. They're headed to the state tournament. We have five of our six Middell schools basketball teams in the state tournament next week now. The only ones left, the Dell City Boys, playing here in just a few moments against the Guthrie Blue Jays. And Jordan has made his way down to the court. He's going to meet with Coach Jay Price and our player of the game here shortly. Okay, so I got Coach Price. It's 14 in a row for Coach. Uh, Coach, this one wasn't easy, though, was it? No, no way. Yeah, I mean... We knew playing them for a third time it was going to be really tough, and they've been playing really well. So we're just fortunate to get out of it with a win. 
and uh, we're thrilled to be going back to state. We're going to slide over here out of the way, though. Yeah. Got to make room for Del City here. You guys get to come with me. Uh, what what was the point of emphasis for you guys, Coach, after your loss yesterday? Well, obviously the Roman Nose kid is in just a tremendous player, and our goal was to try to at least minimize him, make him take tough shots, try to control the boards. Um, you know, they're the type of team, if you let them get rolling, then you could be in a lot of trouble. And I thought we did a good job of finally gaining some control and, and making them have to guard us. Uh, talk about finishing or playing much of the fourth quarter with three sophomores out there. Well, we've trusted them all year, and they've grown up. And uh, we're just looking, you know, we love what we got with them, and we, we feel like we, they've uh, really done some good things this year to get in a position to play in a game like this. So uh, it wasn't a matter of whether we trusted them or not, we did. It was just trying to find the right uh, matchup and all that, and we're thrilled that they did a great job for us. All right, Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Okay, we got the Hopkins brothers here. Uh, Quincy, the shot wasn't always falling. Things weren't always bouncing your way, but I thought you played a tremendous second half, and you played the entire game too pretty much. How, how were you able to do it? Uh, just staying under control, staying poised, playing at my pace, not letting the game speed me up, and controlling what I could control was how I was able to play. What were you able to do well in the second half as far – I mean, you made some really good passes. It seemed like uh, you got used to the uh, speed of El Reno. Uh, like I said, just controlling what I could control, uh, making the right play, not trying to force my shot. It wasn't a good shooting night for me, so I just was looking for my teammates, getting everybody else involved. Okay, I got one more question for you in a moment. Jaden, you're a player of the game. Uh, you had it going on offense. I mean, you were able to outquick the El Reno defenders, not just your guy, but – it seemed like you, when you got to the basket, you were wide open there. What can you say about your performance? Uh, I feel like I played good, but on the defensive side, you know, it really wasn't working for me. I got four fouls and I had to sit out, you know, so, yeah. What was that like with four, watch, so watching on the bench, watching your brother, Steven Anderson, kind of filling in for you uh, with four fouls? It felt great. I knew they were going to uh, come through and win the game with us, and I like it. Okay, so – you're you're gonna you played a little last year, but you're now you're a starting point guard. Team is gonna play for state next week. What's that like? Uh, I really took it as a challenge last year, seeing those people play and taking on the role as a starting point guard. Okay, Quincy, out of you two Hopkins brothers, which who has the higher vertical again? I do. I do. Okay, we need we need to do we need to do a, we need to do a test at some point. Get a video down of you guys. All right, congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Tracy. And we're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as Jordan has just introduced our player of the game, Jaden Hopkins. Jaden had 12 points in the first half. As he said himself, he got in some foul trouble in the third period, had to sit out. He uh, had two points in the third period, and then he only had two in the fourth. But when he came back in in the fourth, it wasn't just that he had only two points. The team started scoring again. And that small four or three point lead as, as El Reno kept cutting back into it, uh, began to dwindle and Carl Albert ended up pulling away just enough to close the game out with a nine point win, 58-49. Carl Albert Titans, Coach Jay Price, punching their ticket to the state tournament. Five teams from the Middale District now in the state tournament next week. Only one left with their final opportunity as Dell City playing tonight against the Guthrie Blue Jays. If uh, they can get the win over Guthrie tonight, all six varsity basketball teams for the school district end up in the state tournament next week. That's a phenomenal achievement. Yes, yeah, so, but uh, just because we think Guthrie will be tired from that demoralizing double overtime loss doesn't mean they will be. So I am glad it's Dell City against Guthrie, not Dell City against Midwest City. That would be, that'd be a hard one to watch, knowing that one someone has to lose there. And you know what, Dell City still... If they don't, you know, play sharp, especially on offense, if they get in foul trouble now, they, they're deep. But if they sit and go through the free throw line a lot, they're going to have some problems. We'll talk more about that in our next broadcast coming up in just a minute. All right, folks, again, that's a wrap on this game. The Carl Albert Titans hold on. Uh, they trailed a lot in the first half. We had several uh, lead changes there in the first half. They trailed a lot in about, about one and a half periods and then finally took the lead and held on to it for the majority of the game from that point. Uh, had a six point lead at halftime and then ended up winning by nine. 58 49, the final score. It was 16 points for Jaden Hopkins, 11 for Steven Anderson. 
it was 12 points for Quincy Hopkins, by the way, and six points for Marcus James, seven for Brandon Rogers, three for Hutch Russell. We're going to get ready for the next broadcast coming up. Another game tipping off. We'll disconnect from this stream. You'll be able to find the Dell City game on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Check out our app, our, the, our website, Facebook, YouTube, quite a few different ways to connect to uh, the Oklahoma Sports Network. And thank you for watching Carl Albert basketball here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Thanks for watching this presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network.